This week, we're giving away a gloves dispenser pouch. You pull gloves out right here. Stay tuned to the end of the episode to find out how to win. Hey guys, welcome to the Blue Ridge Bonfire from Blue Ridge Overland Gear. We are all about overcoming the obstacles to getting outside. I'm CT. I'm Dean. And it's good to have you guys along. So first off, what's new? What is new, Dean? We're in the new shop. We posted the moving video last week in the new shop, in the new shop. Um, so we are digging out of the hole of all of the orders that have been going on. Um, the store is back up and running. Everything's kind of moving forward. Still a little bit of a delay as we try and catch up. Um, so we appreciate your patience and everything. Um, but uh, thanks but for all the love. Yeah, it's not as crazy yeah. as that as the video make that makes out. That was like for humor value. But yes, we are up and running. Um, we're actually at a little higher capacity than we were before already, which is awesome. So we got some good news for those of you who are collecting our seasonal patches. The summer patch is coming soon. I'm not gonna say when. It's very soon. But I'm gonna tell you that summer officially begins on a certain day and it's a summer patch. Do the math. Some Just math saying. there, some Just correlations yeah. happening. Okay. Break, break out your abacus, your sundial. All right, so that wraps up what's new. Let's jump into another edition of Video Tips with this guy right here. Hey guys, welcome back to part two of the 10 video editing tips. So now you guys have an assembly cut. You've put in your A roll and your B roll and your story is starting to take shape. It's starting to work, but your video still needs some polish. So that brings me to number six, cut out the fluff. As they say in the business, arrive late and leave early. You'll see this in movies all the time. Say we have a dialogue scene in a diner. Instead of the characters walking into the diner and then sitting down and then ordering their food and then starting to eat their food and then saying hello, the movie will cut straight to the important part of the conversation. How'd you get inside that cloud? Also, how could you eat an entire box of Pop-Tarts and still be this hungry? This drink, I like it. I know, it's great, right? Another! And then once the important part of the conversation is done, the movie cuts away and goes to the interesting part of the next scene. There's no arriving at the diner, there's no leaving the diner. All of that is just implied. Which brings me to another great rule of thumb. If you imply it, the viewer will buy it. You don't have to show absolutely everything. You can just imply the boring stuff and go straight to the interesting stuff. Now, what does this look like for adventure filmmakers like yourself? Obviously, we don't wanna cut out all of the travel. That would defeat the purpose of it being an adventure film. But you can do stuff like this. Imagine you had an awesome recovery on a tough obstacle on the trail and you shot that like crazy. That was an interesting part of your video. You don't need to show the boring 10 miles that you drove after that to get to camp. You can just cut straight to someone at camp, briefly summarizing it. We hit about 10 miles of gravel, then we pulled into this beautiful campsite. Now we're gonna get dinner rolling before the storm hits us. Now you can just throw some B-roll of those last 10 miles and parking and setting up. You just place that on top of him talking about it. And now your audience didn't have to sit through every step of that unexciting part of the day. So some other bits of fluff you can cut out are redundancies. So other things you can cut out are redundancies. So like saying the same thing twice or like making the same point twice. You know, like when you say the same thing two times, but you really only ever needed to say it one time. Also, you can cut out when people mumble and restart their sentences. You can cut out long pauses, likes, ums, etc. Now, these last two, uh, you don't wanna do too much. If you cut out everyone's ums and whatnot, they're gonna sound a bit robotic, but tightening it up a little bit is appreciated. So we just cut out a bunch of fluff, but there's still some parts of the video that aren't really working, but we just can't bear to cut them out. That brings me to part seven. Slay your darlings. Whoops. This is like a butcher knife. Is this? <laughs> As you're editing and refining your video, there will be parts of the video you love that just don't advance the story. And you'll have to cut it out and leave it on the cutting room floor, as they said in the film days. Believe me, it is a hard thing to do. We all have a tendency to start saying, oh, but I love that shot, or I put so much work into that moment, or this means so much to me personally. Fight that impulse. 
Be brutally honest with yourself and take honest feedback on your edits. Put yourself in the mind of the viewer. Does it serve the main story? Does it go with the title of the video? Remember this, just because the footage didn't make the final cut doesn't mean that the footage was bad or that you wasted your time. It's just part of the process of refinement. So go out there and slay your darlings and you will make better videos. So you have your edit mostly done, but you still need music. So that brings me to number eight, music and sound effects. So for all of your music needs, I recommend epidemicsound.com. Their selection is fantastic and it only costs $15 a month. Now this is not a sponsored segment. We actually use Epidemic here at Brog. So browse around on there. Once you find some music that you wanna try, go ahead and download it, and then you can put it in that project's music folder. Then all you gotta do is import it into your project. So quick tip, if you want some really short music clips that are great for transitions, logos, or mini B-roll montages, try searching the word sting. Okay, no, not that sting. Stings are little short snippets of songs that you can use for transitions or to punch up different moments in your video. So next is sound effects. With sound effects, a little goes a long way. Just adding simple swishes and whoosh sounds when the titles or logos come into the screen goes a long way to your videos looking pro. So here's how to do it. Go to YouTube, look for free transition sound effects, copy that link, go to a YouTube downloading site, put that in there and download the MP3. Don't click on any of the ads that pop up here or the extra tabs that it's gonna try to open. It's probably gonna put a virus on your computer, so fair warning on that. Now you have an audio file with 20 or so transition sounds, which is actually easier to work with than having 20 different files. So now use those same in and out points that we talked about up in editing, and you can place those down in the audio where each of your titles come in or when they leave. So now your video is looking pretty polished. And that brings me to number nine, make a video thumbnail. The video thumbnail is the cover image for your video. If you don't put one in there, it's gonna pick one at random from some random part of your video and that never looks good. So we want video thumbnails that don't suck, but without going into a whole discussion about graphic design, what can you guys do? What I recommend is go study channels of people who are killing it on YouTube and just do what they do. And I don't even mean people in the overlanding niche. I mean like million subscriber channels. Look at their thumbnails and notice how they're communicating clear ideas to their audience and do similar things. Now, if you're not a Photoshop whiz, just go to canva.com, click templates. We're gonna click on YouTube thumbnails. I'm gonna scroll down a bit. I think I like this one here. Uh, it's got the Golden Gate Bridge in the background. I'm gonna click on that. So now we'll choose this upload button and we'll put in our own image in the background and then we're gonna just change the text to be what we wanna be and bam, we are done. So we edited our video, we made a thumbnail. So now it's time for number 10, render and upload. So exporting your video from the edit program can appear complicated with lots of different file formats to choose from. So let me just cut through the noise for you. The only file format you ever, ever, ever need to export in is called H.264, or in some programs, QuickTime H.264. And that's it. None of the other formats matter for YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. That's the only one you ever need to know. However, you don't even need to worry about the format most of the time. And that's because these editing programs nowadays have an export for YouTube option and just choose that and you should be golden. Now there is one reason to delve a little deeper into those export settings, and that is if the files at the end of the day are just a little bit too big, and so uploading it to YouTube just takes way too long. So if this is you, try bumping your quality settings down a little bit, and that's gonna make a big impact on shrinking down those file sizes and making those uploads go faster and your viewers are gonna appreciate those videos being on time. Now, once you've uploaded, don't forget to write a description and put tags in the tags field. Try to think of the topics your people might be searching for with these tags and also what your video is related to. Both the tags and the description go a long way to the searchability of your video. 
Last, just upload that thumbnail image that we made, write in your title, and you are ready to go. So that was a lot. Feel free to go back and watch it again if you need to, but let me give you a quick recap. Number one, organize your files. Number two was how to choose video software. Number three, lay down the A roll first. Number four was listen to the story and make your bold edits there. Number five was add the B roll on top of the A roll. Number six, cut out the fluff. Number seven, slay your darlings. Shed a tear for them. All, all those beautiful shots that didn't work. Number eight, add music and sound effects. Number nine, make a video thumbnail so that your whole project looks polished. And then number 10, render and upload. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video tip series. I definitely had a blast making it. If you guys have any questions, I would love to answer them in the comments down below, and we will see you next time. We're and back. we're back. We put all of our talent into post-processing editing, and we made that happen. Oh my God, did you see it? It was epic. <laughs> so this is typically where we read your comments. Uh, <laughs> but there were just so many great comments that we couldn't do them justice by trying to read them right now. Yeah. So what we've decided to do is we've decided to drag this out for one more week. And what we'll do is next week we will answer all of your questions because um, there's been a couple of people asking similar questions. Plus we want to give you guys another week um, to come up with any ideas. So um, just Throw any more additional questions down in the comments. We'll collect them next week. We will answer them. So we promise a double helping of reading your comments next week, but now to the weekly giveaway. So last week we gave away the ARB Easy Tire Deflator. So who's our winner, my man? So our lucky winner is Frigetto Photo on Instagram. Congratulations, dude. Send us your uh, email and address, we'll get this out to you as soon as possible. So this week we are giving away the glove dispenser pouch, dispenses gloves out the front. It will also dispense squirrels, actually. Squirrel Although tail. Squirrel uh, tail. this is the tail of a squirrel. Hang on, hang on, we're working this out. Right. Hold on, where's his noggin? Yeah, Hold on. We've got a breech burst. Okay, okay, burst. all right, all right. So his, his back end's coming, we've got a foot yep. here. Yep. All right. All right, and and, and there he is. Sorry, buddy. Woo! All right, so, so we'll dispenses gloves a little bit better better than it dispenses squirrels, but uh, but here it is. You get this it and the holds, patch. It also holds holds tissues. Yes, just, just you can put tissue boxes yeah. in or here or like the handy wipe things. Like you, they'll fit in there too. And of course, round patch because we like giving patches away. So here, take it. So how do people win? <laughs> how do people win? All right, so we've been talking a lot about video tips. We've been talking a lot about some different topics on the bonfire. Um, so our question for you guys this week is, what do you think of the bonfire so far? What do you like about it? What do you not like about it? Um, you know, just give us some general feedback about the bonfire, drop it down in the comments. Also too, you still have some time to get, get your video questions answered for that Q and A next week. So you can drop those uh, in a comment as well. Look forward to that. All right, CT, so what's next? All right, so this Thursday is gonna be trip navigation part three. I believe that's the one where you, we planned out a whole trip. Um, yes. So that's gonna be a standalone video. And then um, the bonfire following, we're gonna do, uh, it's gonna be that Q and A, yep. so. So the next, next week's bonfire Q and A, get your questions in. Video tips, yep. questions and answers. Blam. So if you guys love this show, but you don't have time to watch the video, you can check out the Blue Ridge Bonfire podcast, wherever you love to listen. Glad you could join us around our campfire today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm CT. I'm Dean. We'll see you next week. Same Brog time. Same Brog channel. Boom! Bam!